What's up, guys? This is Emerson, your favorite mannequin melanated photographer. And this is Alex or Peach. Uh, you can call me either. I'm your. <laughs> I, I messed up there. I, hold on. I love, I love my credit thought just went. Just, it crashed. Yeah, Alex, so you can call me Peach, your favorite. Your favorite. No, at that point, I'm like, your not favorite. your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. No, that was my bad. Okay, hold on. Welcome to the Faux Bros Podcast. Your one-stop shop to anything Cree. <sighs> Excellent. Emerson, can you... His, his, his is shorter than mine. You got to give <laughs> me a... That's what I was Emerson. saying. You no, 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 no. I can do this. I can do this. Welcome to the Faux Bros Podcast. Your one-stop shop for all things photography, videography, and content creation. Yo, 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 what is up, everybody? We got a new year. We got new guests coming. We got new topics. And we're, yeah, we're going to go all in now. I think a little bit more than before. Mm -hmm. So now we got a routine going. So yeah. So this is episode one, season two. And we'd like to introduce our first guests of the season, of this new season. Uh, ladies and gentlemen and people, Michaela. <laughs> yeah she is a good friend of emerson here and uh she is part also of the creative community in the dmv area yep and she's a very well-known boudoir model out of maryland um shout out to maryland yeah uh cool. feel free to follow her at hope.mika and uh well you probably are gonna give this little intro but i uh she's also a talented photographer Okay. Yes, she is. She's, yeah. Do you know the Instatech? Because I don't. I think it's, what is it? Michaela Hope Photography? Yep. That's um, it. There we go. Got it. <laughs> Shout out to Michaela Hope Photography. So, yeah, but that is uh, something for another time. So, for now, we are focusing on boudoir modeling uh, from uh, Michaela's perspective because she dives into that. She dove into that field. She's an expert about it, knows the ups and the downs, and knows the lefts and the rights the nitty-gritty the nitty-gritty there yep. we go <laughs> um so yeah we're gonna dive deep into that so uh yeah let's get started let's get it Michaela, t tell us a bit about yourself you know like first of all how are you doing today i'm doing well that, thank you for asking yeah that is great to hear <laughs> yeah because uh, like everyone looks good today i f i feel good for one um i don't know how you guys are feeling she's pretty good emerson tell me i'm all you? right can't complain <laughs> All right. 2024. Good year, guys. 2024. <laughs> and okay, so but Michaela, so tell me, um, let's go let's start with origin stories. So what made you dive into boudoir photography in the first place? Or boudoir modeling in the first place? Well, um, when I started modeling, I didn't really anticipate on jumping right into boudoir. Um I just kind of wanted to get a feel for it in general, just the modeling community. And I had had boudoir shoots done in the past for myself um, because, like, it's just something I, have like, wanted to do and felt comfortable doing for myself to help me feel better about myself <laughs> um, and to help gain that sense of confidence. So I was familiar with that type of photo shoot, um even prior to modeling. But when I got into it, I guess because I wasn't really opposed to it, it was something that I was able to add into my portfolio pretty early on. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what else to say about that. No, that's perfect. That yeah. was, wow. Yeah, no, that's actually a good beginning you know definitely yeah because there's a lot of models who like well you probably heard your own maybe different stories but like i know whenever i meet new models or even the friends i have who are models mm. they all give their origin story and it was more of like this is a hobby this is how i started i just uh i didn't know what i was doing at first and then eventually got um uh pointers from other models in the area or from photographers who know how to pose models and all that and then eventually they just took it from there to learn on their own yeah, and uh, that, that's pretty much what I heard from, at least from my side. I don't know if you heard differently. I'm pretty, yeah, pretty much the same, man. Yeah, but I know as uh, time goes on, like models, um, they kind of get a feel of how the community is. 
mm-hmm. and I kind of get a feel of how to do things. But you know, the, obviously, people have to be cautious nowadays because, like, especially there's always those uh, creatographers, which is another topic. predators. In uh, <laughs> they call them GWCs, guys with cameras. Wait, what? They call them GWCs, guys with cameras. So they're not photographers; they're just random guys with cameras. Huh. So they don't know what they're doing. They're just using the camera to get a model's clothes off so they can get a little sneaky peek. Mm. It happens so much. But yeah, t- you, technically, one. we are also dudes with cameras, so, you know. Yeah, but we difference. know photography. Yeah. Guys with cameras don't know crap about photography. They just pick up a camera and they're just like, you want to do a shoot? I'm a photographer. They claim they're a photographer. But if you ask them about lighting or natural lighting or anything, they, they probably don't know what they're doing. They're shooting in auto mode. Ew, auto mode. <laughs> I hate auto mode. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I, used to, I used to be that guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then YouTube University. Shout out to YouTube. Shout out to YouTube University. <laughs> <laughs> Man, throwback. Yes. I mean, yeah, I still do that. Yeah. Anyway, um, so as time went on, obviously you got more experience. But, and uh, with Boudoir, there are times where, well, like I for, I for one did, res- I usually do risque um uh themes along with some other themes that are more well different than that one right but like there's always that comfort level that uh models prefer and which is why prior to a shoot i like to ask models um you know you'd probably do the same yeah like ask them like what exactly is their comfort level so that being said like how would you describe your comfort level with like different poses because i know with boudoir there's like different poses you can do that make it make the perfect picture you know um, overall, I do feel I'm pretty confident with my body enough that I will pose um, just however I feel comfortable. I have a pretty wide range with that at this point. But when I had first started out, um, I was definitely a little bit more cautious, a little bit more mindful of the way I pose myself. Um, I do think me being on both sides of the camera, I kind of get a better idea of like, where where, like where the photographer is standing and um what angle they're catching so that kind of helps i have always been very specific on my boundaries when i do get hired by photographers um but typically if i'm working with professionals like they they will ask ahead of time kind of how you're talking about like they they ask and they they don't push the boundaries. That's a good answer, you know. Not gonna, yeah, not gonna lie. And but um, let's see. But what what? So th- with all those poses, and forgive me if you already answered this, but I want to see like, uh, are there specific poses that you don't you're not comfortable doing at all? Um, not necessarily. More so specific angles that I prefer photographers to not capture i guess um i tend to not do anything overly explicit um myself personally nothing against people who do i have a more artistic vision when it comes to my modeling shout out to art shout out to art me personally no i do understand though if there are models who are a little bit more cautious of their posing um and I think that also has to do with uh, what they're more comfortable with, with their body and everything. So, yeah, that's important because, you know, mm-hmm. obviously, you know, the comfort level of the vibe of the shoot is one thing. But also, I guess, the comfort level of how you pose yourself, because, yeah, I did, I did meet a few people, some people who were like, well, there's certain shoots they don't they do and don't do. But mm-hmm. there's also certain ways they pose themselves like that. They're just not comfortable with because of the potential message it might send Mm -hmm. you know but but i guess it depends on their occupation the family the community they're in and all that just the person they are really some people that too yeah very openly like sexual or or very like just there's there's a whole variety of reasons why people do what they do like we don't shame anybody for it but like yeah everybody's different yeah but I believe, you know, that difference is actually what makes a story unique. Amen to that. Yeah. I do believe that um, with Bajwar specifically, 
you lean more towards empowerment, um, less sexual vibes. Obviously, it's very sexy and very sensual, but the main goal with the boudoir is to feel empowered. So with that being said, um, some people feel more empowered in some poses than others, and that's how it is. Michaela just dropped a truth bomb. <laughs> <laughs> um, what were you trying to say? Actually, could I ask a question? Like to her or me? Yeah, to Michaela. Oh, okay. Oh, well. Okay. So, hey, everyone, producer Shane here, not a doctor. Um, I, so you were talking about boundaries earlier. Like, at what point in the communication with the photographer or collaborator do you communicate that? Like, do you open it with it or do you let them know later on when you're more comfortable with them? I open with that typically um, because... At that point, if they're going to push my boundaries, they're going to waste my time. Yep. Don't waste a creative's time. Never. Yeah. Because if you do, <gasps> goodbye. <laughs> Walking out the door. <laughs> so now. I have a story about that, but never mind. <laughs> yeah. Which is something else we will dive into. Probably. Another day, another time. We could also do later on. To, uh, N- no, 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 no. We're going we're gonna to save that for a little bit later in 2024. Oh, wait. I, so I know which one you're talking You know about. what I'm talking Yeah, about. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, that's, we'll save that for another day. Yeah. Anyway, all right. So good thing we covered that. Now, I know for one, um, there's like so many different expectations uh, when it comes to shoots. Like you have your own vibe, or I guess yeah. a certain vibe you go for. I do mine. So for me, I do different types of themes, but my specialty is like, um, uh, like moody, risque, <laughs> something more futuristic, cyberpunk, yeah, and and, and all that with neon colors. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's my specialty. You give it like an 80s sent away vibe. Because ah, the 80s are so dope, man. I know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The, the, <laughs> like aside from the drugs and all that. But, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so but that's my vibe. Right. But and then what people when people see my photography and want to shoot with me, they, they're they like, um, oh, yeah, can we do this, this and this? And I'm like, OK, we can do the best of my ability. I will help. And then we'll, we'll share ideas and we'll do that. And then they expect, obviously, a good photo in that type of theme. And then that's their expectation. Mm-hmm. So in your case, Michaela, um, like, so, well, for one thing, like, what would you, what do you really achieve from different shoots? Like in that kind of, you know, um, the environment, but also that type of like theme, mm. if, if that makes sense. Like my branding. Yes. But like, for example, like any boudoir shoot, Obviously, it's going to be revealing. So, like, what do you hope to achieve in those different types of shoots? Or would that depend on what the photographer's vision is or what your also your vision is, like, when collaborating? Um, I do I do think it would be more um, along the photographer's vision with that. Um, although, um, I'm trying to think how to answer that. Because um, I typically lean a little bit more towards, like, lifestyle boudoir or creating a scene that promotes emotion. Okay, so those are, like, specific moods and looks that you are that that you have in mind. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I see. I see. Okay. So, yeah, in that case, yeah, I know, because that's good to talk it out in the beginning. Yep. Yeah. Like, because it's a good thing. You do your video calls. Do you still do that? Yeah, I still do that. I require my photographers most of the time to send me a mood board um, just so we are on the same page, uh, oh, especially because I am bringing my own wardrobe most of the time. Um, so I want to know like what their plan is and like what we're creating together. Um, so like obviously I need to know what to bring and like what the goal is and what scene we're trying to create. Very important, guys. Shout outs to Pinterest. Shout outs to Pinterest, yeah. dude, dude. And Michaela is great because I've sent her Pinterest boards and she like comes out in the same, like just perfect. You're really good at bringing concepts to life, inspo picks to life. Oh, big time. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> based on, based yeah. on what I saw. Yeah. I'm yeah. like amazing. <laughs> but yeah, shout outs to Pinterest. Pinterest will be your best friend when it comes to um, no, it does. boards. Yeah. yeah. Cause I know you do yours and then I kind of mm-hmm. separate mine into different themes and topics. Mm-hmm. And then I just add what I got in there. What I started doing was I started creating mood boards for whatever model shows interest in working with me. And so I would like add them as a collaborator if they have a Pinterest and I'm all like, add what you would like to create with me as well. And we can meet in the middle or something and figure out what we're going to do. So, okay. That's yeah. pretty, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. So start 
I should probably start doing that. But yeah, until <laughs> but until further notice, it's always something that pops in my head. Because yes, that being said, so I I mentioned my like specialty. Uh, do you have a specific type of specialty, Emerson? Natural light photography. Ooh. So I can work with anything, any type of light source. So I can even do a night shoot underneath street lights. That's my type of style. I've always loved it. Shout out to my idol, Brandon Wolfel, for who has literally inspired me since day one to really like take advantage of free lighting, which is the sun, which is street lamps, which is any type of light source outside Dude. and make it work. Wow. And uh, just even so, thinking about it, it's like, phew. yeah, shout, it's out, all, shout out to the sun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. But anyway, so but that being said, um, so like. When it comes to, obviously, like I, for one, like to experiment with photography, like in different settings, whether it's inside or outside, right? Depending on the kind of, the kind of setting I have in mind or the light source, sources, and so on. Do you have a specific type of like setting you prefer? Because, for example, we have the living room, the kitchen, uh, the bedroom, um, a parking garage, too. My favorite. Yeah. Your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> um. I do. I mean, I like the, like anything that's more lifestyle, I do prefer that, but I'm very flexible in the scene that I am put in, um, especially for boudoir. Like I'm very comfortable posing anywhere. I've even modeled a workshop for a top boudoir photographer and we were literally given a floor and a window. Huh. And interesting. Wait, so the floor work. was just just a plain floor. No, just a plain floor. No furniture. Nope. Um, wow. We eventually added in a really, like a folding chair. And that was it. Um, Sometimes. So you have to be really flexible with what you're given. Okay. But I do prefer a more lifestyle boudoir. So anything with a bed, a couch, a chair, and then windows are great too. Oh, no. Windows are fantastic. Yeah, because like the sun goes in, and if the frame is like you know it's shadows and all that, like yep. oh man, and you lower the contrast, and oh, man. I have to say my least preferred would just be given a backdrop, but it's doable. <laughs> no backdrops are important too. Yeah, they kind of just well it depends on the type of backdrop or what yeah. colors and the texture and the style it is. But I for one love backdrops. I'm actually considering creating my own with paint, like splash it on there but um, i'm slowly getting into backdrops i'm slowly getting into studio photography oh uh, yeah a little yeah. bit a little bit i have those two uh alien beast strobes so I gotta, oh yeah you still gotta get the stuff for that right yeah i'm still working on it <laughs> it's a work in progress but yeah soon <laughs> soon get guys to it. yeah yep. do it anyway um no but that's a good answer yeah but like the whole it makes me curious about the whole floor and just the one single chair some of the simplicity is more right less is more less but then again more. i for one like to work with a little bit more you know i think it really depends on your style um as a photographer because it overall it's like what are you trying to create with these images and do you want the focus to be more on the subject on the scene are you creating a story so i just really think it depends on what you're going for Okay. And with like the different and with a certain like mood for any type of shoe like that, like you just dabble in all of it or you, like, cause, cause like for me is more retro up to futuristic, but with color lights, yours is more, I guess, more retro if anything, but. I mean, my new preset right now is a mixture between modern and retro. I see. Yeah. The feel I want to go for with my work is more like in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, as for that, yeah. Like working with a lot of shadows and. Okay, sh yeah, shadows are good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but but you don't have a preference in like the mood, right? Or like the, no? As a model, not necessarily. Um, I like, I lean, like leaning more towards like the fine arts lifestyle type of things. Um, I don't think that's how I was supposed to say that, but it's okay. Um, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, I, I think we, yeah, I think we processed that really yeah. good. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, so going back to what you said about hair and makeup, do you have a preferred style or do you like have any or do you like take suggestions from like different like photographers? 
I usually ask my photographer what they would prefer. Um, some people want a more natural look. Some people want to be a little bit more glammed up. My go-to um, is just the, like full face of makeup, um, full eye makeup, and then lip color. I always put it on when I get there, so I get a preference of like, hey, do you want a like poppy, like red bright lip, or would you like something more natural? And then. I usually go for curls because I use my hair a lot with posing. Um, so it just depends on what we're creating and exactly what the photographer is going for look-wise. Um, a lot of boudoir photographers specifically, uh, they it's it's either one of two things. They either want that like bedroom look, like fresh in the morning, waking up, like bed head or they want glamour like wearing heels in the bedroom uh fake eyelashes pin-up curl style it just depends it's usually one of those two things um my go-to is full face and just what i feel comfortable with sometimes uh depends on the photographer but they will provide hair and makeup services for you okay true awesome. and if they and if they don't you just leave it up to your own like to I, I'll usually ask them, and then if they want me to change anything, like, there's no problem. And you, like, so you take suggestions sometimes, but, like, do, do you have, a, but you do it to a certain extent, right? Like, let's say they want you to recreate a 1950s type of hairdo or something like that. Yeah, I can't do that on my own. So. <laughs> <laughs> if they, I can straighten my hair, curl it, or throw it up in a bun. Like, I only... Personally, myself can only do like three things. You can only do so much, yeah. yeah. Um, so if they want more, then they'd have to provide that. But true, true. Most mm -hmm. of the time, I'm pretty good at creating the look that they want with what I have. True. Shout out to hair and makeup. Shout out to <laughs> hair and makeup. All right, yeah, but it's good. I mean, you, I mean, it's good to provide those services. But then again, dinero. It's all about the money. Yeah. <laughs> if only it rained money man sometimes it's worth it if they're building true. up their portfolio very true true very true which it, like a lot of the bajor photographers i'm working with do use my um services for their portfolio that's usually the ones who will provide the hair and makeup for me amazing i know ah oh, man but yeah but seriously shout out to hair and makeup and not only that but also shout out to hair and makeup artists artists yeah because yeah. there are a lot of out there that some of them are known some of them are not that well known so i have a lot of a lot of my new followers are hairstylists and makeup artists oh dude yeah they keep asking me f to collab and i'm just kind of like oh I... maybe no <laughs> i don't know <laughs> yeah i'll be like i'll reach out when i need when i need you that was cool. two years ago <laughs> <laughs> damn man don't call me out like that Oh, is it, oh, it's based on a true story? Oh, shit. No, 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 no. Shane cut that off. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, uh, now uh, going into a different uh, part of this topic, something important. Very important. Privacy and consent. Yep. Very important, guys. So regarding privacy and consent, obviously something important in the creative community, the photography world you know, um, like photographers treated with respect, you know, also same for the models, you know, please, for the love of everything, holy, please respect and consent. Right. Yep. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, I know I have my horror stories. You too. You do too. Mm -hmm. Um, I know probably Michaela does, but I even have a consent contract now. Oh, okay. That's perfect. Yeah. Depending yeah. on the, depending on the concept, I send that out and say like, these are the rules. I will have limited contact with you. You are required to have limited contact with me. If anything goes past that, I have every right to stop the shoot and you will not receive any photos whatsoever. Okay. I don't know if you guys saw that, but that was a mic drop right there. <laughs> but that being said. That's literally what it says on my. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> verbatim. Yeah. Verbatim. Yeah. yeah exactly. That yeah. being <laughs> said, uh, wait, do you have a, Michaela, do you have a consent contract? I don't personally, but uh, again, when. I feel like that's an expectation that comes with booking with me. Um, and when they do book with me, I'm very upfront about my limitations and 
where I'm comfortable posing um, or how to what level I am comfortable posing and um, dressing and everything else. And I feel like it's common sense at this point, or at least it should be to not touch the models. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Please um, do not touch your mom. Yeah, that's like rule number one. Consent. Yeah. I mean, there will be situations like if I if my strap is twisted and I'm like, hey, can you can you untwist this for me because I can't reach it? Yeah. But like, don't just go out of your way and... <laughs> do yeah. it without asking you know yeah. um because there's also asking guys you, you start with like may i do this and that and then you know if they want the help or if they need the help something like that yeah and then that's like the only thing i can think of consent wise that would be fitting um and then posting my images most photographers are really good about asking if if they can um but being in this field, it is almost expected that they are hiring me that they, so they can use my images for their portfolio. No, I see. That makes sense. So yeah. what about like for like promotional purposes or like does it really matter where you want it, where it's posted? Like a specific website, a specific type of um, board and so on? Um, typically with my bookings, they are using it for portfolio gain. Um, especially if I'm working with professionals, I haven't been in the situation where anybody's using them for anything but that besides maybe submissions to magazines. And I'm completely fine with that. But oh, yeah, true. generally mm -hmm. they ask me ahead of time. Um, I do feel like respect goes both ways in this community. So amen to that. Um, mm -hmm. If I'm getting if if I have a magazine reach out asking me about submitting my work, I'm always like, hey, you're going to have to ask a photographer because first off, it's their work and I don't own the copyrights to it. So true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of gives me a reason to just put my logo on like at least a corner or something, you know, when submitted to magazines, they don't want any water. Oh, no, oh, no, no. I meant in general. Oh, like, in general. For, well, the ones for the magazines, obviously, you can get rid of. Yeah. But like for any ones that are like out there somewhere else. My logo should at least maybe be there now. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking about. I think about. I need to start instituting that because I feel I like kinda, you already I, did. I did at one point and then I just got lazy and stopped doing uh, it. True. True. I think I'm going to start doing it now in this new year. I think if you're not being compensated, why not? It's free advertising for you. That is true. Yeah. Like make Son of Sanchez into stickers, put it on your local cafe, you know, <laughs> in that not on the counter or something and then yeah. run away. <laughs> Stop. No, but no, but great response from you because important topic to always talk about yeah, I agree. honestly i agree and i mm -hmm. think it's something that should be Address, addressed yeah. at like before you are even like planning on booking that's something you should start out talking about <laughs> oh, <laughs> no yeah, for sure time. yeah that's why, that's why like do whenever like i speak to a new person i'm shooting with flooding the chats like both of us just like it's all flooded with messages back and forth mm -hmm. saying you know what um what themes are you into um what's uh your vibe oh you know and it's in a bunch of pinterest boards and so on so the chat just keeps going yeah. well with me like when i work with somebody new i always say i want to start with a fashion shoot that's how me and michaela started out i see we started out doing strictly fashion and then we worked our way to a calvin set and then we got into have we done a boudoir shoot yet no i don't think well, we have wait, um did we I mean, if you count our scream session, it was somewhat. It was somewhat. It was yeah. booty. You see, I call yeah, that. It was booty. a lot of booty. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, he started shooting. What's that? What's that concept called? What concept? Uh, Calvin Klein? No. Well, shout, first of all, shout out to Calvin. Shout out to Calvin. <laughs> um, second, um, comfy boudoir. That's it. That's yeah, yeah, comfy boudoir. That's what yeah. Calvin Klein is. Yeah, or, or at least I, I mean that's what I sort of call risque because you're it's revealing but not too revealing, right? It's fashionably revealing. Yeah, I would well say the it's thing is, in between between like yeah. boudoir and fashion. And fashion, yeah. yeah. It's basically, I call it like sexy fashion, really. Yeah, I just like using the word risque because like yeah. I like saying it. Risque. And, yeah. and I just love the look because it gives off like an or I can make it urban too. Oh yeah, I have a, the Calvin underwear set with the Jordans and some socks. Yeah, like come or, on, or even like uh, a good trench coat. Throw that in there. Yeah, like you can really get creative with Calvin sets. 
Yeah. Yeah. Like it, like a Calvin set, and then what you take Bilal's trench coat, like the green one. Not uh, Bilal's trench coat. Shout out to Bilal. I know. Shout out to Bilal. <laughs> he has like he's very fashionable. Shout out to one in a melanin. Well, yeah, one in a melanin. Go yeah. check it out. <laughs> um. Anyway, so moving on to collabs, something we all did at one point. I think we still do that. Gotta love collabs from time to time. Yeah, depends like, on the person. Oh right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have I have my rules for collabs. You have your rules for collabs. Yeah, I do. me, I'm, I think I'm a little more strict. We remember when it comes to collabs is usually between and from what I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. Mm. At least maybe an experienced or like at least somewhat experienced photographer and an experienced model. We talk it out. Yep. And then have a concept in mind, and we're just like. Sure, let's do this. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, I mean you can shoot outside. If it's in a studio, like we talked that out too. Like I and probably the same as you where we at least we, I mean, we like splitting the price of the studio. It's uh when it comes to collabs for me in studio, yeah. when, when I think of collaboration, everybody's putting in equal effort. Yeah, so exactly. Exactly. I'm all like costs need to be split if yeah. we're booking a studio. Yeah. Because that's just how it should be. Yeah, because sir well, I don't know if the I don't even know if the right word services is used if i'm using it right but mm. services are in there from both of us putting in you know 50 50 make yeah. it and there's no and there's no money being no money being exchanged for each other's services so yeah pretty much it makes sense just to split the costs um the what the one thing i say about collaborations all the time like a collaboration is two creatives creating something of there should be no lead in the shoot whatsoever Everybody should be putting an equal amount of effort in. So first off, shout out to Rebecca Chen. Oh, she yeah. was the first person like that, that like blew my mind with how we operated our shoot. It was insane. She is very professional. Yeah. Very professional. Michaela yeah. as well. Like, oh, yeah. The, we like oh. she tells me stuff like, oh, like, oh, you should we should actually work over here. I was all like, oh, but we can also do this here. And we're like feeding off of each other. That's how a collab should be. Yeah. So, um, sh- yeah, you cannot you cannot be a photographer and collabing with somebody and sitting there like, what do you want to do? Yeah, no, that happens to me. That happens to me like my first few times. That's yeah. not a collab. That's a free shoot. That's, yeah. That uh, is. Uh, one point at some point. Yes. I mean, shout out, first of that, all, but, shout that, out to, but, but, but that's just my opinion. Don't, no, 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 for sure. Yeah. It. yeah. That's just my opinion. Like the price is split or we even talk about it. The ideas we are combined together and then we, the props accessories are also brought in from each party yep. and then just makes the shoot perfect each time. So yeah, all those shout outs, <laughs> but regarding um, collaborations, uh, how open are you to collaborating on creative shoots? And if you are open to it, even today, um, like, do, or do you say yes to collabs to like any collabs or it depends on the idea? I, I am limited with the type of collaborations or time for photos that I do. Um only because I'm at a point in my modeling career where I don't necessarily need the, anything specific for my portfolio. Um, I'm happy to work with other like-minded um, creatives if if I like the concept um, or if they if I like their work and they want to create a concept with me. It just really depends. Obviously, it's it goes. Again, with the respect of your fellow creatives, it goes hand in hand with um, throwing everything all in to create this concept that you guys both want to bring to life. But yeah, I do limit collaborations. I feel both creatives should be somehow adding to the other's portfolio. Um, especially if there's no money exchanged. And I also think that there should be set amount of guidelines or what's the word I'm trying to think of expectations that goes into you both working together to creating this concept, whether that's who's providing what, um, if the photographer is like, I'll give you five images per look, if you bring, X amount of looks that add to my portfolio. It just, yeah, I, I limit it because I, I'm, I don't need to do it at this point, 
but I want to. It helps me not feel so burnt out with things because sometimes people just want the same thing over and over and over again. I feel that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It keeps my creative juices flowing. There you go. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, there are times where people will take advantage of models like, cause the moment they see their, um, like you, regardless if it's a collab or not regard, like the moment the photographer, or I guess a guy with the camera sees, <laughs> sees a certain model that's well known in the area, or they've seen before, like at a street meet or something, the moment they post something that's very revealing, then they're going to try to send a message and they're going to try to set something up. And then to me, that's kind of like, like, dude, you know, oh, it wasn't that it was like about what I just said. Yeah, <laughs> I was I was wondering what you were saying. Yeah, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah, but but and then they'll do that because like I saw this one story of a model I follow. Apparently, so she does. Uh, she wants to get into fashion uh, modeling, mm-hmm. right? And the problem is that she also posted some stuff that are very revealing. Okay, and she also did have in her. Uh, and her bio on Instagram is uh she has an OnlyFans. So I mean good for her. She's earning the money, right? But uh-huh. the thing is the moment she, like she posts revealing stuff and has an OnlyFans and all that, people found out, photographers specifically, and some take advantage of that and then send messages. Yes. It's yeah. always like, Hey, you wanna shoot this uh, you know, sexy shoe? Hey, do you wanna shoot something in this uh this lingerie or something? And then, the normal messages they get is, uh, do you wanna shoot some content? Dude, will, that, you, yeah. will you trade for content? Would you trade for content? I trade for content. <laughs> all the time. I don't even, like, I don't have OnlyFans. I don't do that type of concept. I'm not opposed to it. It's just not what I, like, it's just not it's for not me. It's not a cup of tea. But I get so many messages from people, guys with cameras, who are like, will you trade for content for your OnlyFans? And I'm like, no, I don't have, <laughs> there, there I don't t- have an OnlyFans. There are times where I'm convinced those are bots, but yeah, I don't. Seriously. For <laughs> you wish, but no, it's not. Oh my gosh. It's crazy. Know. And it, recently it's feet pics. <laughs> oh God. I don't know why. Dude. I, I mean, mean, people they have are a, making a killing just taking feet pics. Yeah, they really. have a platform for that. Yeah. But they got a lot of platforms for yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> but now we should do another platform. You and me. Ready? Only hands. Yeah. Oh, like, not no. the only hands. Only <laughs> hands. Only hands. Good lord. We were just talking. We were about just that. talking about that. <laughs> but it's just it's I don't know, because like it got so much for her to the point where she had to make stories saying, like, if I have never worked with you, I will only um if I've never worked with you, I will only do fashion shoes because she wants to get into that. If she shot with you before, obviously, if she feels comfortable, yeah, she's down for something like like revealing. You know, she sounds like me because when I I tell people all the time, I've said it from the beginning. I'm all like, I know, I said in the new year, I'm getting, I'm not going to be like uh, limiting myself to this type of thing or this type or that type of thing. But if I don't know you, keep your clothes on. I feel like that's perfectly acceptable to keep them on. If I know you and we vibe, if you want to do something implied nude, boudoir, lingerie, Calvin, whatever, I'm down. But don't hit me up on the first shoot and be like, hey, I want to shoot something like this. And it's like an oiled up model with nothing on, just covering her boobs. It's not happening. (laughs) <laughs> it's, <Yeah>. not happening. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> it's not happening it's not happening oh man yeah <laughs> crazy world we live in huh yeah now but yeah but with all those sh- but with shoots in general you know i like to give a lot of uh energy right to make yeah. sure you know it comes out well mm-hmm. but in addition to energy i like to give a good amount of time but something that's very um uh, well a good amount of time where we can both share ideas talk a bit communicate and also shoot something really good right now that being said um like i for one like to dedicate if it's a studio or maybe even outside i like to dedicate dedicate like two hours because i feel like two hours i can get a lot of stuff done two and a half maybe what you you what, what do you do only one hour i do like an hour max dude damn dude oh hey, my God. i was just talking to another photographer about this because as a photographer, I'm very quick with what I do, but yet he will book out three or four hours, and I'm like, I can get See, this that's done in thirty minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my that's, that's acceptable are like thirty for, minutes. That's yeah. acceptable for a group. Like, if you're outside, I get that, but if yeah. I'm inside, 
at two hours for me because I got to set up everything. And then, oh yeah, yeah, that's different. Studio, I'll probably do two hours, but yeah. outside, uh, with my uh, with my knowledge of natural light, I can get a, I can get shots done in like forty five minutes. Okay, for me, it's yeah. like I say two hours only because if it's a new model and I don't know them, I get anxious. It's natural for me. I get nervous because I'm like, oh man, I'm gonna screw this up. Yeah, but if I know them very well or I've worked with them before, then obviously it's gonna be shorter than that. So yeah, but in the, that being said, so so that like, is there? Do you have a certain amount? I mean, because you say you do it quickly. So what do you do? Like forty five minutes, maybe an hour as like, a model. Like the moment, you, yeah, like dedicating to a shoe. Like how much time you got, or how much time you want to dedicate? Um, I get a feel for the photographer usually, but I require one hour bookings. I charge hourly. Um, when I get booked. Um, if I have to drive more than an hour one way, I require a two hour minimum because at that point it's got to cover my gas too. True. Mm. True. Yep. Um, typically two hours is a sweet spot. That's what most people book. I've had a couple three to four hour bookings. I feel like it's drawn out, but at that point we're trying to do more complex, um, styled shoots or they're changing lighting and stuff it's it just depends um with photographers who i work who i work with and i'm used to working with we can usually get um what we need done within an hour to two hours no issue okay that's good too yeah i mean i mean yeah. it's similar to us if anything yeah um but you don't look you don't have like a specific time of day you prefer do you because like for i guess it depends for us but like whenever it's like like spring or maybe autumn, like golden mm -hmm. hour is really good, but I guess it depends what the vibe is or because like you, what I don't like to, what I actually made some mistakes of doing sometimes mm -hmm. is uh, if you're, if I'm shooting outside, you probably know this too. During those peak hours where the sun is just right there. It's called high noon. High noon. Yeah. It, it, it can either make or break your photo. You just have to know, you have to play with shadows. You can't, you got to like play around like, put your model under a tree, let the leaves get creative and yeah. make a pattern on the face. You can't do just like regular portraits at high noon. You have to really get creative. Yeah. Unless you have a helper with you, bring in like a You'll bring in like a diffuser yeah. or a reflector or something. And that's just a headache. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it sucks sometimes. It, yeah. It's helpful, but if I'm alone there with the model, obviously I have to bring like tripods or mm, whatever to hang yeah. those. Yeah. It's a pain sometimes, but cool. But do you have any specific time you prefer? Um, it depends on what they're trying to create, but also my schedule is usually pretty flexible um, because photography is my full time job. Uh, I always tell my photographers like when they're booking that weekdays work best for me during the school day because I don't have to oh, worry true. about yep. a babysitter for my son or anything like that. Um, and then my weekends are the only times most of my photography clients can do stuff. So that's best for me personally. But if they have a certain idea, um, concept, like golden hour, I'm not going to be like, no, we have to shoot at this time of day because obviously they're not going to get golden hour between 11 and two. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then also like if they are a natural light photographer and working indoors, like we're gonna have to do earlier in the day, not at night when there's no sunlight coming in. Yep. So I don't have a preference. I respect photographers who are working in certain lighting conditions or prefer certain lighting conditions, um, especially because obviously I have, I like shooting golden hour when I'm outside. I can shoot in all lighting, but if that's what they're most comfortable with and that's the style that they're trying to achieve, so be it, I'll be there. She'll be there, guys. She'll be there. <laughs> and knock it out of the park. Yep. All right. So coming almost to a close. So when it um, when it comes to shoots, um, I've been dabbling with this a bit. I'm probably going to have to still work on it. But back then, I used to use WeTransfer to transfer all the data, all the data, all the pictures and videos to the uh, person, to the client, and so on. And then now I've been using Pixie Set because this guy hyped up Pixie, Pixie Set. I love Pixie Set. Shout out to Pixie Set. Yep. <laughs> um, but when it comes to shoots that you do, like, do you have any specific 
uh like requests regarding the final edits like not just the delivery right but like when it comes to editing like and retouching like does the colors or do you want it, it like cropped in a certain way and so on no because i feel like every photographer has a certain vision that they're trying to create with their final images um and me being hired as a model i'm just there to help fulfill that vision so i don't I don't feel like they have to be a certain way for me. I, obviously, if the photographer wants my opinion on something, I'm not going to sit there and like not give it to them. But um, no, because as photographers, we all do things a certain way to achieve a certain style and we have preferences. True. Yeah, I know we all got our own preferences. Definitely. And- yeah, because mm-hmm. like Pixie Set helps. Like, I don't know if you get if there's a specific way you like it deliver. Because like Pixie Set is like pretty big in the creative community, I think. Yeah, Google Drive too. But Pixie like, Set also creates my contracts for me. So, y- yeah, see, that's yeah. what I like about it. Yeah, yeah. I just did not you just get have to, to pay twenty five dollars a month. There total. it is. <laughs> yeah, I think. Um, I think Google Google drive is probably my least favorite but everything works <laughs> it was popular yeah, at one point it not was anymore. popular like back in 2018 not yeah. anymore it's just like the capacity and then you got i think you got to pay for more capacity i only use google drive for like my my day job yeah pixie yeah. says like they have a limit on capacity too but like you can also delete folders if you want that's to. what i do yeah yeah after like three to six months i start deleting oh months oh. okay old albums because i'm all like you've had a ton of time to download this to your computer yeah if you haven't well yeah my bad Mm, i like pixie set i i used shoot proof as a photographer which is very similar shoot proof yeah i'm gonna look into that yeah shoot proof it's pretty much the same layout uh just the different domain and then um i like dropbox a lot anything you know i have to say Anything that allows me to download all the images at once and not one by one, like <laughs> yes. oh, yeah. that's it. That's the sweet that's spot. That's why Google Drive is terrible because you have <laughs> you to do can, one by one by yeah, one. <laughs> and unless you go on um, the computer and do it, nobody's got time for that. So yeah. <laughs> ain't nobody got time. For that. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, Pixie said. Wow. But it's shoe proof. Actually, shout out to shoe proof. I don't know how that works. I think it's a similar, but mm. you said it was similar, so I'm gonna go check that out later definitely yeah because i'm gonna yeah i really want to see <laughs> Actually, how that i think pixie set allows i think they have more free options than shoot proof it's just i think the pixie set does have more free options sweet but uh, yeah but okay so we did get through a lot we did get a lot of good information about this a ton of <laughs> information i know like yeah. you knocked it out of the park out of the park out of the park <laughs> like, it's, it's way over crazy the like it's still going man yeah. like you see it Gosh. Yeah, I don't see it anymore. It's out. And Michaela was so nervous about this. She was like hitting Dude, me bro, up on I'm Instagram. Dude, bro, I'm nervous right now. But <laughs> she was hitting me up on Instagram like the weeks leading up was all like, I don't know how I'm going to do. I'm nervous. I'm just like, just. Yeah, just, hyperventilation. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what am I just going to have? I was just like, hey, just be yourself. I mean, we're going to ask you questions. Just <laughs> be yourself. Oh, my yeah. gosh. <laughs> Express yourself. Yeah, it's, a, it's a podcast. We just, a couple of friends just hanging out. Yeah. Casual conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, sip. <laughs> on some drinks and that's talking. only you is it me yes yeah it's probably me. yes that's some good old water right here. all right yeah <laughs> shout out to water guys shout outs to water man we've been giving water shout outs a lot lately yeah yeah uh, shout out to hydration yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah so that was episode one of season two and yeah it's it's been amazing like right incredible now. yeah great first start off a great start <laughs> shout out to 2024, 2024. <laughs> oh my god yeah it's yeah so this is just a, a taste of what's to come so we have a lot of good guests coming up a lot of good topics we're going to talk about a whole and, lot and yeah so we're gonna have a lot more coming up later and so emerson thank you so much for being you Oh, I thought you were going to say thank you for being here. I'm like, I'm the well, co-host. I'm the, well, being I'm the co-host, here and bro. being you. you <laughs> thank <know>. you, bro. <laughs> thank Sh- you shout you out to Shane you. for being our producer because, you know, shout out to Juliet for uh, a yeah. good script. Yeah. Anyway, okay, episode one is in the books. Now, please just keep following us. Keep listening. Keep watching out for us. And yeah, so we will see you next time. See you guys. Peace.
Thank you for listening to the Fote Bros Podcast. Feel free to follow us on Instagram at Fote Bros Podcast and follow us on X slash Twitter at Fote Bros.